Right, well. so we're in York in Fulford. Um, right, we're going to try something a little bit different today. Jen's going to film all day, practically. All right, Jen. Oh. She's got a gimbal, so hopefully for you people that moan about it shaking about and stuff like that, it might be better. Also, the sound quality might be better because I've got mics on as well, which John has supplied. Um, and here is John himself. The man himself is his birthday today. He's 34. Uh, he right. is young. <laughs> <laughs> so, how old are you, John? I'm cake. Um, 47 years He's 47. Old. Right. So, this build is... John, tell them how long this build is and what Five the crack is. Five metres by 2.8. Right. It was... It's, as you can see, it's on an old garage base. And we don't use the garage base, although on this occasion we probably should have done because it was about eight inches thick. But what we've done, we've punched a hole in it. Or John, rather. John, Adam and Davey. Davey's out there somewhere. Adam's there. This is Josh. Josh is new. Say hi, Josh. Um, so they punched holes in it, they've dropped the rods in. These are one metre long, they are M24, they are galvanised as well, and I'm shouting again at her. Um, John's been round with the laser, he's locked these nuts off, so they're all level now. What we're going to do now, we're going to drop on the 4B3, which is on the saw over there, it's treated, it's been in a tank, it's pressure treated. We're going to make the perimeter, and I'm going to show you how. We're going to drill the holes for the rods. Uh, we're going to drop them down, we're going to make the perimeter, we're going to chainsaw them off, I'm going to notch them out with the chainsaw as well, um, and then we're going to put our 4B2 green treated in, our joists, and create the floor. We're going to insulate it with 100mm PIR foil backed insulation, and then we're going to... John, what kind of flooring have we got this time? John? Uh, the, that white rubbish stuff. Mega peel, easy peel. Yeah. We've got mega rubbish. We've got we've got uh, mega easy peel again because uh, there's no protect. So we're going to use easy peel on this as well, and I'll show you the downside to easy peel as well because it is a pain in the ass. Okay, right. Let's go for that then. Are you just gonna? Do you know? Just randomly go around them. You know what's happening, right? Um, so yeah, yeah. So you can go film stuff. Watch them wasps because I don't want to see you running around with wasps in your hair. All right. Right, these are 4B3, they are treated, um, like I say, they've been in a pressure tank. What they are is actually a wall plate, so they're designed to sit on the breeze block internal skin of a house, um, and then your roof timber will sit on there, you'll cut a bird's mouth and that will sit on there. So that's a wall plate, but it's been treated, so we can use it for our perimeter. Right, so we're on the garage base, so obviously we don't need the weed suppressant membrane down on the garage base, but we have encroached a bit onto the ground here, so we're going to drop that on there. Just so no, no weeds grow up. Um, right, so as I was saying, the steel channel, it's a 100mm steel channel, it's 50 high. It's about 5mm there and about 8mm there. That will then sit on the steel rod like that. The 4B3 will sit within that and that will support the full base. That's what's going to happen. These 4B3s, they're a 4.8 long, so not long enough for this base. So what we're going to do, we're going to join them with a splice plate. Davey throws a splice, a splice plate, will you? And some twist nails as well. Have we got a hammer as well? Jen, do you want to come over here? That's a splice plate. It will join the timber. So basically that's going to go on there like that. Will you get us a different hammer, please? I can't use that one, Davey. They're twist nails. Can you see them, Jen? Twist nails, that's what we're going to use to join this. Thank you, David. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the bottom on first. I will buy a PPN nail, I keep promising, don't I, John? Yeah. And that's going to happen. It's just at the moment, I'm not 100% sure if it's cost effective because of the cost of the nails. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep nailing that. I'll nail every other hole. I'll put a, spi a splice plate on both sides and that will then join them 4B3s to make them long enough for what we actually need and then we're going to drill them with a Milwaukee and I'll show you that drill as well. Right, Jen, where are you? Right, so that's... <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can't. Right, that's your 4B3, so I've obviously made it a lot longer than what I need now. Um, what we'll do, we'll drop this one on... Should we drop it on the back? Adam, we lift that over on the back for us. David, can I slide you forward, please? Slide I, I want to get in there, mate, with that. John, what's your head? Will you move his... Help him, look. He can't move full one on his own. Right. 
So what we're going to do now, we're going to put that down there, if Jen can see. Have you got it down, Adam? Put it down, take it off your foot, mate. No, take it off your foot. Right, so Jen, do you want to come over here a little bit closer? Right, so the 4B3 is sat next to the rods now. So obviously we want this 4B3 to sit down on them rods. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark the centre of the rod. <coughs> like that. John's doing the same down there. And what I'm going to do then, I'm going to drill a hole, a 25mm hole, straight through the centre, which will allow that timber to drop down as well. Um, John's using his square, if, if Jen can see. So there's two ways, of, there's three ways, in fact, of finding your centre for this. He's found the centre with his square. There's another way, so you can measure it, 74 mil, so that's 37 mil, which is your centre. Or there's another way, and you can just guess it. So I'm quite happy to guess it, because I've done one or two of these before, as you might know. Um, right, John's going to... That, that, that was measured, John. That, hold on, hold on, John. That was measured. Yeah. Right. That was guessed. Right. No, John, check that. That's not measured. I'm going to show you now in a minute. Check that. That was guessed. 32 and a half is half. Right. Look. Right. It's 75. Yeah. Half is 32 and a half. No, it's not. It's 37.5. That's half. Watch. 37.5. See, I've marked my tape. 37.5. So, in fact, John's used the square and his balls. No, Adam told me that. Yeah, you idiot. Right, if you want to remark all them. Right, Jen, if you want to follow us down here. <laughs> so, even though it's John's birthday, he could get finished today. We'll see what happens. Right, this Milwaukee. Um, we specifically bought this Milwaukee for this job. What model is it? Jen's asked me a question I can't answer without putting my glasses on. It is an M18 FPD2. Um, it's, it's powerful, it's fast, and we've burnt out two... Um, what we burnt out? What, John? What did we burn out? We burnt out two Makitas using this. Then we bought a Hakoki a a plug-in drill, which we also burnt out as well. Um, yeah, they were corded ones, so they weren't no good. So what we've decided there, we could use this Milwaukee. John sent me a review on it. It looked dead good, and it proved to be dead good. Have you sorted out, John? Maths is not our strongest point, so we tend to use calculators. Do you want to lift that up for us, John? Josh, will you get his chainsaw out, mate? Right, to you, John, a bit, mate. Right, so... As John's remarked these now, which side are we coming in, John? Right, Milwaukee. Jen, do you want to come see? It's got a 25mm DeWalt speed bit in there as well, which probably helps the drill as well. Somebody's put on slow gear, would we'll do that? I think the slow gear is Well. Should I put it on lower gear, John? Try it on lower, it should be a lot better in lower. It's got more torque in lower, I don't know why. I am. Okay, okay. Yeah, but it hasn't stopped. Right. Did it? It didn't stop. You did need to play your hole. Mate. Right. right. Let's put it on second speed again. Battery? You put an hand on it and you can pull it in and out that Throw it away, John. I slung it, didn't I? No, the Milwaukee will last, won't it, John? It will, come on. Give us another battery, it's battery. I might not be. They'll do it with a full battery. Although they reckon we're 12 amps. It's 100% it's battery. They reckon we're 12 amps. Right, while you're waiting for the battery, talk about cleaning bone at home. I'm going to roll it over and do it in a minute now. I've done them. I'm not. Right, you've done. Go for slower speed and clear it out. It'll go flat straight through. Let's have a look at the battery. Oh, it is. Of course it's battery. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Is that battery done as well? No. Oh, no. Do you want to get my battery? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody put on fucking talk. Who uses still last? Not me, oh, no, I don't know. Not me though, I never do it all. Right, so when they're drilled through, Jenny, do you want to step back? When they're drilled through, what happens then? You need to roll it over and you need to clear off any burrs. Although you will pull it down with wrench when you tighten it down, but just pull them off. Right, so what we need now, we need the nuts to sit down lower than the top of the timber. Pass this chainsaw, please, David. Um, for that, that to happen, we need to notch it out. Okay. David, can I have a note? A note, give me a note. Right, so we want the nut to sit down lower than the timber so that when we put our 22 mil flooring over the top, it'll glide over the top. What will happen now, that nut will get compressed down and it will hold the timber to the base and then the flooring will go straight over the top. So I'll take the rest of these out now. Right, so that's the, that's the back timber drilled. What we'll do now, we'll put the shoes on. David, you want to get the shoes on there, please? Can we get all the shoes round all, all things, Adam? So this now should drop down if John's put his rods nice and plumb, which he normally does, um, to be fair. David, watch yourself. Which is the highest rod, Liam? Is it this one? Yeah, that, definitely that one. So he's going to put on the highest rod first and they're going to try and keep it level, which will aid it going down as well. Sometimes you've just got to give your, little, your rod a little bit of a shove just to get it to locate properly. Which it's going down. Um, now, that will go down a lot easier if John has put his rods dead straight, which it is. Obviously, if you don't go through straight with the drill, then obviously you're going to have that same problem as well. Well, you can see the 4 by is sitting down. It's 4 by sitting down onto the shoes. So that, that there's, John, it's not down there, mate. It's about 20 mil off. Right, so that's sitting on the shoes. That's supported. The same will happen with the front. Once we've done the front, we'll do the two sides and then we'll drop the middle in, but I'll show you that happening as well. Right, is that, is that ready to go, that front? No, you have to take them off. Is that front ready to go? Hello? Have we got another one, Adam? David, you want to get this middle one nailed up? Get your 1.5 on it, yeah. Have you got some joystick? Um... What's up, John? Yeah, no, no, nip, go on. Go on, talk about it. See what you do. Right, so basically I'm now putting the nuts along the top and going to nip it down to the shoes. But we found out if we do the two ends, sometimes there's a twist in the timber and they don't quite meet. So I've just left that slack for now in case I need to slightly pull up on one of the timbers. And then when they're screwed together, which you'll see shortly with the 250 screws, I will then nip these two corners down to the Okay. Right, Davey's doing the middle one as well. The middle one obviously needs extending, but that goes on a little bit different to the end ones. Um, what will happen? What will happen is we'll put the two end, uh, the front and back on, sorry, and then we'll put the two ends. We'll cut them off, and then we'll drop the middle one down. But we'll have to cut that as well. So as soon as Josh has finished nailing this one, we're going to offer it up. We're going to mark it up, um, and then we'll drill it out and chainsaw it out as well. Josh has now done the second one, um, which will be the front timber. So you can see, I mean, the 4.8, we've added another metre and a half on that, I'd say. So that would be 5.8, 6, 6.3. So we'll drop that next to it. Um, again, we'll just mark the centre of the rods. Now, 
can see what's happened there now, just because of the way it's been put down, the shoe is actually, the, the splice plate is on the shoe, which we don't want. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pull that that way. Are we still hanging over enough to cover that end, Josh? Yeah. Scribble that line out. If you wanna mark your centers of your steel, push it tight to it, Josh. That's it. We'll just mark them where they're gonna go. Um, do you want to put it up on trestles, Josh? You good? What I'm going to do to aid it going on I'm going to clear the bottom of the hole, left and right, just to make it a bit bigger. So it'll aid it going on. Thank you. See John there, he's, yeah. so he's, he's tightening all his, all his nuts down, which will then make that timber dead level with them shoes. Right, the beauty of this system is it's millimetre perfect, and any fool can do it, can't you, John? But only, oh, oh, only a clever fool can do it right, can't they? An old fool, an old fool. An old fool. An old fool. Right. So we'll chainsaw them out now as well. Josh, will you keep hold of it for me while I saw it, please? Just don't come in, in line for the saw, will you? They've now put the shoes. They've now put the. They've now put the shoes on the rods. Um, John, do you want to lock it? Which is so you need to put on the highest one first, and then offer it down. I think yours is the highest, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Then put it down. Yeah, Josh, you are. Yeah. If Liam drilled his hole straight, they should push on. I am, John. I know my rods are straight. We good? Right, so what's happened there is John's obviously took time putting his rods on and I've not drilled that hole dead square. So, there you go. So if you, if you imagine, let's say your rods are like that and you're trying to put that timber on, you're fighting against them. So if your rods are dead plumb like that, your timber's gonna drop straight on. If I've drilled the hole dead plumb as well, but if I've drilled the hole on the piss like that and the rods like that, you're also gonna struggle as well. Does that make sense? Come here, mate. Yeah. What am I looking at, John? So I'd like to give you a little tip. This has bit us in the book before. When you put these nuts on, what I'd always do is have a little wiggle of your shoe and when you tighten your nut, your shoe shouldn't be able to move. We have had it on rare occasions with new joiners where the floors looked not quite right and when I've gone like that, the shoe's wobbled even though the nut's been tight. Just a little tip. You know what I mean, Right, Is so... I know, yeah. <laughs> right, so we've got to do the sides now. Now, the sides 
obviously don't need joining. Right. Adam's already put, we'll go, we'll go back to that one Adam's already put on there. Um, have we got the, um, have you marked them Adam? No mate, it's good there, just get them marked and then we'll cut them out. So you can see the sides there, so the sides we've literally just sat them down on top of the front and back timber. Adam's going to mark them, he's gone a bit crazy now and he's not actually marking them off the steel, which if you look at the stand there, look. Stand there, look, come here. No, no, stand there. Come here. Can you see it's off? What, what you actually want to do is that and come straight off your rod like Adam. Yeah? Do you know what I mean? Am I going to... Oh, there's a right low one there, is there? Um, just guessing it, Adam. Yeah. So what, what I'll do now, because... It is going on. Not like it did last week when we were playing then. Right. When we put them on last week, you were like... Right, so I'm obviously not being precise enough for them. Hey, old John. <laughs> That's the side. Um, chainsaw. I bet we're going to run out of petrol on this. Yeah, we're actually going to run out of petrol on this, so I'll show you another way of notching these out as well. No. Oh, there's a right little bit. Adam in a. In a. Right, we've run out of petrol, so I'm going to show you now how to cut them out. Get me a pack of Ansars as well, please. There should be a pack in there. I have a brand new one. Did I get them sent here, John? Have we got a chisel? Josh, have you brought a sharp chisel? Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I haven't brought mine either. <laughs> Jenny, your tools in back at van? Yeah, he's back. Right, Josh, there's a, a bag. Oh, no, I've got Jenny's bag was here. I brought it. Is this Jenny's bag? Yeah, have a look in there for a set of chisels. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you need? We need some chisels. It's all right. It's not going to damage them. Right. So we've run out of petrol, or oh, possibly. So I'm also going to show you how to notch these out with just a handsaw and a chisel. Well, they put a bit more petrol in that. So, you watching, Jim? Right, so, uh, David, give us the hammer, will you? Thank you. Look at one. Thank you. Ooh. That's a good one. No, that's What's a that nice one. There? Right, box fresh chisel. Jenny's face is now not happy. Right, so <laughs> she's wincing. Um, right, so I've sawn it, so what I'm gonna do now is just break it off with chisel. It doesn't have to be, you're not chopping out a hinge, do you know what I mean? You're literally just making a recess for that nut to sit in. Which is enough. It's, it's as rough and ready as that, basically. That's absolutely fine. Um, Josh is going to do this one. Adam's gone to get the pet roll. He's a southerner. <laughs> Where are you from, Josh? Devon. Devon. So he's now. So I've got this. Right, so, no, we're not, no. I've got a brand new saw. Josh has, Josh has picked up the brand new saw and he's decided to go for this saw he's found in the back. <laughs> Josh has come all the way from Devon to work here, specifically to work here. Adam? Get it out and we'll go for it. Did you get some petrol? 
Right. It won't start, mate. There's no oil in it either. Where's chisel gone? Where's chisel gone? There, mate. No, oil's only lubricate, Adam. Right, so that's that. We'll get these shoes on here. Davy, you need to get on ball, mate, and watch us when we're doing these. And when we're ready, these shoes should be on when we turn around, yeah? Are they? Apologies, Davy. That's your ice one there, Josh. You good? Are you on that one, Josh? Yeah. Right, so obviously that won't be down any further than what it is down at the moment. So what we need to do now, we need to chop one of these off to allow it to go down. Now, if I chop that one off there, that means I'll be putting my screws in there, which will then mean that my 250 screws have got a chance of it in that rod. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to chop that one off. That'll drop down and then I can screw through the side of that one there. We'll do the same on this side over here. Again, I want my 250 screw to go in, so I'm going to chop this off. Josh. Oh, 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 oh. Send that that way, Josh. Lift that one off there, Adam, instead of trying to drag it out. Right. So what needs happening now then, I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to cut that off and then John's going to screw through there. Right, David. So, so I, do you remember when I discussed this nut here? Obviously, it's slack now, but this timber is ever so slightly lower than this. So, I'm going to get David just to give a right little pull up on it, get it flush, and then I'm going to screw it, and then I can nip down these two nuts. It'll be just a twist in the timber. Ready, David? <laughs> Once, once that's in, I don't know if you can hear me, I can now knit this nut down and also knit this one. Thank you. We'll give it back. <laughs> there, so we're just going to clean the shoes out just so there's no impeding it and it's going to sit down nice. Um, we'll just roll it over and check for any burrs, which were good. You good there, Josh? Good?
way down, Josh. And now with your middle one obviously we've joined the middle as well so what I'll do I'll just offer that over the top of there let it sit on there we'll make sure that the shoe is in between two rods the purpose of the middle the one is like um, I suppose you'd call it what they're called Josh when you do an extension of the cold dwarf walls where you support the floor in the middle I can't remember what they're called you it's know where like they put the brick. But not on the roof, isn't it? Yeah, I think I can't remember what they call now. Um, it's like so. If it was like a floor in your house, you'd have like a little dwarf wall yeah. built underneath out of bricks just to take the bounce out of the floor. No. Which, for all intents and purposes, what's up? So they're spinning it to stagger the joint. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter, but we like to just make sure that the splice plates are all in line with each other so that. There's no weak point as such. Will that go through, Josh? And so that I'd, I'd sooner that plate being between two. Yeah, that's it, mate. Mark it up at that. Yeah. So we'll mark them up now. Um, we'll centre them, drill them, chainsaw them, drop them in, cut them off, and that will be once John's gone round, tightened all his nuts, and put his. As he showed you putting screws in, you're going to fall over, aren't you? <laughs> Did that other Milwaukee go and charge Adam? Adam over there is bringing the 4B2 green treated in. Um, they're a decking choice, but obviously they're treated, so that's what we're going to use for our base. I'll explain to you in a minute why we use the timber sizes we use. And I don't need it, Adam, I just want to make sure it runs in case it runs out. Yeah. What happened then is I lost concentration and drilled it at a fucking 30 degree angle or something bizarre. Then he'll blame my rod. He's never missed a rod in his life, have you, John? Never missed my rod in my life. That 100 mil rule, John doesn't know what it's all about. Never happened to him. 100 mil what, Josh? 100 mil itis. 100 mil itis, that's a new one, John. You heard that? I used to have it, but I got rid of it. I was sick of it. You shook it off like you did Covid, didn't you, John? <laughs> yeah, please, watch your leg, John. Watch your face as well, mate. You'd be better off. You'd be better off with, with a bit of 4B3 oh, and lever it up. David, get me a length of 4B3. Long, longest one there is, mate. This might go down. It is going down, John. I can see it. Really? That's it, John, mate. Go on a bit more. There you go. Yeah, you're still powerful, that. Is it? You can get rid of that, David. Huh? What we like on here, Josh? This one good? Stand on it, stand on it, Josh. Just a oh, too, too much, mate, too much. Come off it, just put some. Look at that. See it bend them rods. <laughs> <laughs> John likes the best tools, don't you, John? I've got all the gear and no idea. <laughs> <laughs> have we just have we done that end over there, John? Josh, can you lift that one there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
You good? <laughs> David, will you find me some safety glasses out of my van, please? <laughs> you know the dark ones, David? <laughs> so that's the perimeter completely done. We've used 250 screws to join it together. We've used John's Milwaukee. I can't even see what the code is on that anymore, can you? Gen 3. It's a Gen 3. And have we got a serial number, John? MD18, I don't know, whatever. It's, it's a decent bit of kit anyway, whatever. Oh, whatever it used to be. Years. Two years. And he's got John Loves Claire written on top of it. <laughs> no, it says John Loves Off again. <laughs> Right, so that's your base. What's going to happen now is I'm going to get the angle grinder, the nine inch angle grinder, and I'm going to cut the rods off. Um, with the, need, the need cutting off, a few of you said, why don't you send them up through your wall and bolt your wall to the rod? But that doesn't make any sense and it'd be a whole lot of work as well. So we're going to use this Hakoki. Um, where's this one come from? Station two on a deal for 90 quid, a bigger than a little one. There you go, two on a deal for 90 quid. <laughs> I've got some blades with it as well. <laughs> um, where's the DeWalt one gone? The from the DeWalt one, because we had a little connector block on it wrapped in tape and it were in a puddle, wasn't it, John? <laughs> wrapped in a bag, yeah. That's how we rock. <laughs> we are going to mend it. Right, so I'll cut them off. Uh, are you sat me extension lead, Adam? Yeah. Um, I'll cut them off. There's a lovely little sandwich shop around the corner. What time is it, John? It's half ten is the fresh roast beef off the, off the bone. Right, so we're going to wait till half ten for breakfast. It's 20 now. It's 20 now. John's there, yeah, I think he should go for sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so John's going to pay for sandwiches. It's not at all, but there you have if you want to. We've, we've, got a, we've got a watcher. <laughs> well, we had them all on earlier. You alright, mate? Morning. Yeah. How are you? I was bringing us a cup of tea. Mine two sugars. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so I'm, I'm going to grind these off. Obviously, health and safety, grinding discs and all that. Um, glasses are essential. What I'm going to do, I'm going to wind this lead off so that I'm not winding it off later. I will try and keep away from everybody with these sparks to make sure that nobody else is going to get these in their face. And I'll cut one off, I'll show you why I'm cutting it off and tell you the reason. And then what I'm going to do then, I'm going to explain to you timber sizes and why we use what we're using. What are you looking for? I've just seen one here. Yeah. One there, look. So, John's wound down the nut, it's actually lower now than the timber which we want, so when we put our flooring on we want it to fly over the top of that. Stupidly, because you can't see the wood for the trees sometimes, years ago what we used to do was notch out the OSB, the flooring round it. Do you remember when we used to do yeah, that John? We didn't know what the hell we were doing to be fair, I don't know why we did it, why did we do it? <laughs> and in the middle what we used to do is get um, a hole saw and drill holes, because obviously the nut was sticking up and then we'd like decided one day wouldn't it be better to drive it down a little bit John? Right, so I'll cut these off. So if Jen can see that now, um, I'll use this to show you there. So imagine that's the flooring. Can you see from that side there, John? John? Jen. You can John all the time. Not at the important times. Right, you can see there, if that's the floor, it will glide over the top of that nut, and that's what we want. Um, all right. Is that broke as well? Uh, so I'm going to go around, I'm going to chop all them off um, and then that will be the base perimeter completely done. We'll have breakfast then. You alright? Our lass is ringing me to wish me happy birthday. Is she? She says, are we all fat and I said, no, we're working hard. <laughs> Not yet, oh yeah, D tell her we're off to the pub afterwards. We're off to the pub afterwards, yeah. Just so she knows. Alright, all right, see you soon. Love you more. Bye. <laughs> watching this right John had a pair of Snickers did you have a pair of Snickers you set on fire John with the Snickers 
You know, I think they were cheap tight ones to... Oh, they might have been. No, I think they were Snickers, mate. Anyway, sure you explain it. how I set it on fire? So that Come on, then, John, let's have a... Uh, basically, when you put the grinder on the nut, it always fires spark. Watch, watch like this. <laughs> With that being said, like an idiot, I stood there grinding, right? And it was just hitting my leg. The spark was hitting my leg. And I said to Liam, I smell burning. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> But we've now moved on to Mascot Advance, so if Mascot, if you are watching this, Josh is needing a pair of Mascot trousers, so if you'd like to send some, that will be the foot. Oh no, Davey as well. Josh and Davey need a pair of Mascot, so if you want to send a pair for Josh and Davey. Size, waist? Uh, 32. He's 32 long? Long. 32 long? long. There you go, a Mascot. What, 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 what shoes do you want? Right, come on, Josh. Um, right, let's let's do the trousers first. So the boot, uh, the trousers rather mascot advance. I know a lot of you asked what we're wearing. Um, they seem to be fireproof as well. I've had this particular pair for nearly four years now. Um, they are expensive, but they're brilliant. And next thing, boots, steel blue. They've got a zip. They're easy on. They're easy off. They're the most comfortable, comfortable boots you will ever wear in your life. They are that comfortable when you go home from work. It's not the first thought in your mind to take your boots off. Jen still wears her in bed sometimes, don't you, Jim? Yeah. I prefer the grey mascots. <laughs> They're a nicer shade. <laughs> right, so we're going to carry on. We're going to cut all these. They're going to work out where the 400s are going. No, 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 and then we're going to have breakfast as well. Right, OK. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the joists in with 400 spacings, not 400 centres. And the reason why we're going to use 400 spacings is so that we get the most out of us Kingspan. Kingspan comes in 2.4 metre lengths. So if we go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, we'll get six nice cuts off of a full length of Kingspan. So we're going to put the, I don't know if Jen, Jenna can see that. I've now put a 400 mark on the joist and across to tell me that my joist is going to go here. Now I am going to say the new lad, Josh, who is a joiner, um, was going to go mark all the 400s first. But you never do that because when we put this one in, when we nail it with the joist hanger, it could move two mil one way or two mil the other. And they do do that quite a lot, Josh. So if you start marking them all, all the marks will be off. I'm not telling him that. Well, I'll, well, all right. Adam's just saying that if it made the gap smaller, we cut them at 400 cent, at 400, so they wouldn't go in. And if it made the gap bigger, then they would be really baggy. That's why we physically measure each one to 400. Right, Josh, if you give him a lens. What? Right, I'd also like to say that Adam has actually cut the timber a mill big and left his line on so that it's tight because it's so annoying when you try to hold them in and they're falling onto the floor. So if he's done his job right, when we put the joist hangers on here, we will have to tap this in with an hammer. That's why we don't go ahead and measure them all before because this could slightly push the gap wider as we go along. Yeah, you do, Jamie. Right, so Josh is now putting the joist hanger on. Taking care to not let it stick past the end. Otherwise, it, you, <laughs> you get your finger broke. <laughs> you get your finger broke. I'm trying to uh, do this video, brother. Oh, Right, so we're trying, well, we're not trying, but we position it so that this is on the end. Now, Josh has made a mistake on that. Can you see how when it's on, we've got this here, so it's not right. You realistically want the end of this flush with the end of here. You don't want it stuck past either, but if it does, it will push back. You'll see when we whack it in. So, Jenny's here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chop this joist hanger here, and I don't know if Liam will leave the bit on where Josh has just tried to bend it and it didn't work. If we give that a nip, you can you can use the grinder, that, that nip, and then what happens is it bends over. Just give it a tap now, Josh. No, you've got to go like this up. You've got to hit it that way, then that way, and then bang that over that way. Do that properly. I've not done it properly. I was just showing you that that's it. 
and now he's tapped it right in like that Josh because you've tapped it right in you're getting a good hold of it so you want to nail the top first then bang the back bottom over you don't want slapping your joy hanger but I don't know if you can see this I have this right and now Josh is whacking it's moved well that's why I'm just letting him get his joy hanger in first Perfect. What? That's nice and neat, look. You can see I've done it before. You think to that, Jen? No. <laughs> Let me get some nails out. This is where the PPN gun, I think, could come in really handy. Liam's really quick without it, but I just struggle to grab the nails and get them in all. <laughs> Josh, you can do your 400 and give Adam your next measurement. Right, it's John's birthday today, he's 47. Um, he did ask for a cake, but he thinks we've forgotten. So we're gonna go around and hopefully surprise him. They've flown out, but it is what it is, isn't it? Till he looks up. And where is he? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Yeah, you've got to wear it, John. Fellow, he's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. And so say all of us. You have to stick it on, John. Get nail gun out. <laughs> Do you want a piece of cake, John? No. You have to put it least on. So anybody else have a nail? Save it. Not. Um. No. That's gonna be the Can you take a picture? Oh I'd love a couple of <laughs> Right, so we're building the back wall now, we're using 4x2 CLS. Obviously the building is greater than 4.8, which is the length of the CLS. Um so we're just gonna We're just gonna um extend this frame basically. They want two more as well, Josh. Two yeah, two more, two more uprights there. It's gonna because the frame isn't big enough. Gonna make another little frame and just add it on the end there. Thanks, John. Gonna let me get mine first, Josh. Yeah, you go. Oh Josh, what? you might be better off nailing that together before we put that one in, what do you reckon? Get your head in. I'm good on length there. Have some 90s John. I've got a suit, I've got a suit. Thank you. Oh, nail it to the floor, have I? Have you nailed? Have you nailed the? Have you nailed the top now, Josh? Yeah. yeah. Just pull up, Josh. I've nailed it to the floor, mate. 
That's it, it's fine. Did you put some 63s in the gun, Jen? Whereabouts? Are you cutting the gun afterwards when it's on? On the ring there, Liam? Yes, John, I am, yeah. Yeah, please. This is your 400 this side, John. Right, Jen, do you want to come over here? Right, so we're going to square the frame on the floor with the use of the OSB sheets because it's obviously a right angle because that's how it comes manufactured. Um, we're going to cut it off afterwards. You've seen us do this loads of times. Jen, do you want to get in here so you can see? John? Oh, it's just the bottom. Up, mate, up. Right, so I'll get that corner right, I'll get the leg right, and then... So once the leg is right, because the OSB is a right angle, we just move the frame to suit. And that means when all them boards go in like that, then the full wall will be plumb. I'm going to mark 400 centres now so that they know where to nail. And so on and so forth, and that will be the wall. You've seen us do it loads of times. Get us a circular saw. I'm going to cut these boards off while they're in position as well. We're going to let, have an OSB. If Jen can have a look there, she'll see the OSB overhang, which will hang over the side of the building. Any moisture that does build up, which won't build up, because that's not what happens, will then drip off down the side of the building and go to the floor and never, ever be an issue. Circular saw depth, I've told you before about this. You either want to lose your fingers or cut your fingers. Set the depth of the blade so it's just past the OSB, which that is now. So if that goes through there, I'm stupid enough to put my fingers under. All I'm going to do is get some nasty stitches. Whereas I won't lose my fingers that way. That's your overhang there. That line there is your bottom timber. John will just show you. Now what I'm going to do is nail. Battery's not in, John. Nail that way at an angle and then I'm not going to risk coming out the bottom there because when that sits on that floor there, any nail that comes out will hold it off and up. John, did you nail that one, mate? I don't know if it's got it, mate. It's the top nailed. It's the top corner, so you need to I got no 60 freeze. John. Yeah. It's, it's bouncing. A bit more, a bit more. Right, so you're going to have to let me do my 400s before you do it, all right? All right. Just, just hold, no, I'm going to shoot down and Jen and get them. Will you get us another gun? Yeah, so 63s. Give me two 63s. Is David there? Yeah. yeah. Give me two guns with 63s in it, David. 63. That line there's my cut off, that line there's my bottom stud, as I've explained before, I don't want any nails to go through. Um, you can go for that now, John. Are we good on both? No, no, you, you know what you can, Josh. I'll know what I can. Are you good there? Josh, no, you need to come down there first. You all right, Davey?
Not sure how it's going to finish, John. You might have to put a rip in it, mate. Yeah, but it's not running on the wall, is it? No, no, no. I don't, I don't, I want a full board over that joint, John, if you can. Right. No, no, no. You can't. You have to put a piece into there. Yeah, I think if we put a piece in there. Because you need to carry on with your squareness, you know, your right angle. See, halfway along there, Josh. So I think if we put a piece in here at 400, then we can rip that last piece. And it'll Will that last piece yeah. go straight over, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's on Dave, you're going to break your ankle on them, mate. Pardon? You're going to break your ankle on them. Do you want to set it 410, 448, John? What? Set it at 448. What, 448? Yeah. Put your timber on that. Use timber as a guide. That should give me a 410, shouldn't it? That's Adam. You set it at 448? Yeah. Will you go all the other end? What are you trying to get, John? 410? Yeah, somewhere around there is good enough. Yeah, go on in. 410? You good? There you go. And this off cut, unfortunately. John, help him with that board while you're down there, mate. Are you good, John? You want to get the top, uh, Josh? Yeah. Right, put a full sheet on, John. We'll mark it up and we'll take it off. David, let's have a full sheet up on there, mate. What have you got there, John? 11.32-ish. Uh, 11.27. Right, we'll cut it at 11.27 then. I'll rip it off then, John. Oh, you Did we say 11.27? Yeah, what do you add on for that guy? Just nail that first, mate, and then... Oh, hang on, Liam, it's not... You good? To be honest, this is alright. Yeah. 11.27? 11. No, it is. You gonna mark it up for us, John? Yeah. Yeah. Is that in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's Gone a bit, thing it there, like. Bit going to wall of it. That's fine. Don't matter, does it? I'll just stay to that side of the line. Though. It's not going to matter, do they? I remember learning this one and set that on the outside. We'll do this one, John. Just, just mark us 400 there. Um, do you know what, Josh? It's all right. Because um, there's, there's, there's other timbers here, isn't there? Yeah. We'll nail them all, do you know what I mean? Nail them all? Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking good. We just move, is that circular, Josh? Um, it's because the gas operated, isn't it? it don't... No, and the shit in winter, but you can't beat them for fucking reliability in summertime. Yeah. You can nail all them. How are they shit in winter? 
the gas, gas freezes. Cold, yeah. Yeah. We got any more sixty threes? Eighty five mil, John. Eighty five inches. Are we? Stapler as well, Davey. You get stapler? Did he hear you, Jen? Sorry. Right, that's your wall lower speed. When we stand that up now, that will be plumb and level, hopefully. That's the idea behind it. Um, we're going to vapor barrier it now, and we're also going to um, put slate buttons on it, which will carry the metal cladding on the back of the building when that goes up. So obviously, this is, there's enough room to work there, but it's going to be tight and awkward. Not as tight as some of the spaces we get into, but um, it won't be too bad. John's going to cut the slate buttons. <laughs> we will. <laughs> We will put a slate button every 400 and that will carry the metal cladding then. Um, right, Josh, then put this breathable membrane on it now. Let it hang over six inches at the end, mate, and keep it flush at the bottom, yeah? It's a roofing membrane. You know I'm not spot. talking to you, don't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, right, you take that. There we go. Bring it over six inches, Josh, yeah? David, jump on there with your stapler. Are you, good, are you good, Josh? Yeah, just flush, mate. So the idea behind this is it keeps any moisture out of the building, but also lets the building breathe because it is a breathable membrane. David's now going to go down with the stapler. Where's the hammer tacker? It's in the back of the Got a few lights. Going, that 100 mil overlap per uh, Josh, yeah, 150 rather, yeah, yeah. sorry. Again, six inch hanging over, yeah? yeah. Go on, David, off you go on that one, mate. Do down there, David, and I can cut it off, mate. Keep this one flush with top, yeah? Flush with top? Yeah. Are you six inches over, Josh, yeah? Yeah. You're not running out of staples yet, there we know. No. It's like I was mentally counting a minute. I had 4,327 staples this morning. <laughs> How many you got now? Oh, no, it's John. Was that worth that? How many? Uh, can you see the duplex? Uh, Drywall tools. What's that going on? Go up there for me, Dave, in the line. Right, so what we'll do now, we'll revert. Can I just flick them off you, Johnny? And then they're not going to work. Right, um, Josh, you want 100 mils, uh, 90 mils rather in your nail gun now. We're going to drop back to the 90s and we're going to fit these slate buttons. Davey, yeah. you go to the bottom, right? I want you to locate. Grab a nail gun with 90s in it, Davey. Have you got your glasses on, Davey? I put them down, Davey. Anyone seen them glasses? I put them down, the clear ones. No, I'd sooner you wear yours, Josh. I don't know if you need any of them, but they're 400. So. John, have you seen any glasses, mate? No, not C CC glasses, then. Uh, not Liam, it's a bit too big. No. If you use any, no, thank you. Right, David, you go to the bottom, mate. Don't nail it. Josh, yeah. do you want to follow us round with nails because you've got glasses on? Do it. No, no, you can, you can locate them. Go to the bottom, David. Right. Just, you can get one at the top, uh, Josh, right? He's going to locate the stud at the bottom and then you just fire down it, yeah? What do I look for? The nails, the nails yeah, mate. Yeah. We'll bring it to the edge of the timber on that one. Yeah. 
Right, Josh, if I can just get you to turn the other way, Josh, just so that you sort of stood behind us when you do it, yeah? Yeah, I'll always nail the first one, Josh, yeah? I'll always nail the first one. Once he tells you it's right, you go for it, yeah? Right. Treated roofing battens, um, John's cutting them. We're fixing them with 90mm nails. That will enable us then to fix our metal cladding. The metal cladding does not need the airflow because obviously it's metal, whereas you would need to naturally dry. So what we're looking for there is a double battened wall. This obviously, oh, we're just single. Have you got any more nails, Jen? Thank you. David, don't touch it till I nail it, yeah? And have another strip. Just there, uh, Josh, if you need any. Form up the two more, John. I have, yeah. If you can't pull it, David, it's nailed, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so David's going to get an appraisal when he's been there six months, and he's going to wear a suit. And if he doesn't wear a suit, he won't be getting any more money. <laughs> I've already pre-warned him. Does he have to wear a bow tie? Yeah, he's going to wear his prom suit, because that's the only suit he says he's got. So David's going to turn up for his six monthly appraisal in his prom suit. How are you, David? In fact, we'll make him work that day in his prom suit. <laughs> Again, on end with this one, Davey. Yeah. Right on then, mate, yeah? Are you there? Yeah. Right, that's your back wall. Um, basically, all that wants is some metal cladding. If we had the metal cladding, we would put it on now as well because that proves beneficial. Davey, yeah. I'm going to lift this up now. Just have a scoot down there, Davy, see if I've got any nails sticking out the bottom. What Davy's going to do is just going to check see if any nails are sticking out the bottom because obviously that will lift the floor off the wall and that's not what we want. We want it to sit nice and flat. You good? Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Josh is new, so Josh is not aware of the fact that when the nails go through the bottom. <laughs> have, we got an, have we got an angle grinder? Yeah. It's a little angle grinder, John. Right, Josh and Davey, if you lift the wall up, I'll cut it off. Hey, here's my glass. Cheers. Um, so what's happened, basically? Jen, do you want to go around and just see what's happened? Obviously, Josh is new. Um, this is the first time he's built a frame wall with us anyway. Um, but obviously, he didn't realise that our OSB hangs over. No fault of his own. So what we'll do now, they're going to just lift it up so I can go down and I can cut these nails off. Right, Josh, do you want to hold that up in there for me? Can you both lift it, yeah? Are we good? Be careful with this arm. Ham? No, this arm. Watch out, Jen. Oh, dropping it. Thought you were losing it then, David. Right, so all the nails are off now. What I'm going to do now is just make sure that they're not sat there because that will defeat the purpose. Um, they can put it down now, you can put it down. Thank you, Josh. I've got this. Your fingers sure. out. There you go. You all right? You all right, John? Are you out my way? Yeah. Pull that wall this way. Me Pull that wall this way. Right, so what we've done, we've put the wall in the position oh, where we feel yeah, when we lift it up, it will drop down. We don't want the wall to drop off the floor because if it does, it'll be a bit of a bitch to pick back up. Don't let it drop off the floor, Josh, yeah? 
Okay. Are you there? Yeah, right. What they're going to do, they're going to hold the wall now. I'm going to find my impact driver, wherever no, the hell that is. Um, have we got some 100 mil screws? Where? Right, so what's going to happen now? We're going to put a couple of screws in it, make sure we're happy. Then we're going to nail it to the floor. Um, we'll get one in each end. All right. Is that on that glue, John? Do you want something that lift it? Is it sat on something? Just stand it up. Is it sat on something? Looks like it is. Stand it up, John. Lift, come and lift that with him. Lift that big five metre wall, John. Just so I can have a little run up under it. You can move it back a bit. Lift it up, man. Lift it up, Come on. Right, Adam, yeah. Yeah, you ready? Well, no. Don't put fingers on the gun, you know. No, that's good. Right. Variations in timber, Kelton timber and such. Are we good? Yeah? Hang on, I push that way back. Are you hanging over enough, John? A bit more. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, perfect. Push it this way, Josh. Are you pushed, John? Are you pushed back this way enough? Okay. John, will you go in the middle and shove it in the middle as well? Um, so, in case there's a curling wall, what we're going to do is just shove it in the middle. Davey, go put your eye down there and have a look down this timber because it's quite long. We're going to just make sure it's straight. One minute, John. Have a look down there, Davey. See if that looks straight to you. Right down, Davey. Get your eye right on that corner of wood there. Look, does it look straight? Yeah. Um, because it's such a long line, we want to make sure it's straight so otherwise there'll be a curl in the wall. What? Or I forget. Ah, thank you. They only have 15 metres, but that's plenty of it. It's enough, it's for as well, isn't it? Right, so what they're going to do now is a couple of screws in that to secure it. Yeah, they're going to 90 mil nail it to the floor now. These nails that are sticking up there are simply because we've cut, put them in at an angle um, because we didn't want the nails to come out the bottom and then impede the height of the floor. Oh, just five or six nails in each one straight down, please. All right, John. John? Yeah. All right. Yeah. What are we doing here, John? Uh, yeah. uh, John. Do you want to follow behind? Yeah. 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 To be honest, I knew that a minute ago. I just didn't <laughs> know the difference of the building. John, what did we say was 900 for that door? It's, it's, it's 7 mil. You know what I mean? That's what I was just interested to know. Was it was, I always checked. Linton was like millimetres. I know. Get all that off there so that we can get this frame up here. No, we're doing sideways. I've got an extra bottle of pot there. Go find it. So Liam, the 400 is on this I'm way. I'm gonna, either. yeah. Yes. Um, should we take the door out afterwards then? It's a lot easier. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine. No, it's not. I said eight to nine. <laughs> you're running them up, you're running them up. I'm running them up, man. Yeah, yeah. You did an old grip. He used to do it in Polish on the door. Oh, we need it, go. What? Can we have some more 90s, please? We got it in Polish. They were good, though, weren't they? Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Woo! Right, there is a door going in this end. It's a bit of a funny setup, this one. But yeah, um, I'll explain the layout of the building in a second. It's a bit of a funny one, but what we're going to do for a bit of speed, we're going to actually 
cut the door out afterwards. Won't make no difference to us. Um, sorry, John. Time wise. Can I push it to you, Josh? Can I push it to you? Push it wherever you want. Can I have a hammer? Thank you. Let's have two more, John. One more, rather. What? Just get one in the middle of there, Josh. Um, Have it. Have you got across top? Um, that's it. No, no. Right, so with the overlap of the OSB there, the overlap of the OSB will then sit over that timber, which is what we're aiming for. Then we can tie that wall into that wall and tie it into there as well. There's one there as well, John throws the hammer. Just watch it, don't slide the foot floor, Josh. John. Jenny, you on that corner to video that? Right, no, no, one minute, Josh. You get to the other corner to see that going in, right? Sorry, Josh, can I just get in there for a video, mate? Right, you're there. So what's going to happen? That OSB there is going to overlap that, which will then fix that OSB to that. We'll also fix that frame to that frame. So that's what we're aiming for, which is right. Jen, will you kick that bottom in? Lovely. Do you want to come back round here now? Jen. Same again. So we're going to put a couple of screws in there. I'm not going to put loads in there because I know there's a door going there. And we're going to end up cutting out afterwards. Josh, when you nail that, don't nail them bays there. Because there's a door going there, they'll end up coming out anyway. We're also going to tie the two walls in together. We're going to use screws to get it right first, and then we're going to use nails. Right, stud wall. Um, have you got enough battery left, Jen? Yeah. Right, there's a bottom plate and a top plate. I'm going to mark them at 400 centres. That will mean our plasterboards and our OSB because we are now getting OSB at 1200. They will all sit on the 400 centres and work out for sheet spacings as well. So, top plate, bottom plate, just double mark them like that. It's not super, super, super critical. Um, you can set up a spacer if you want, but if you set up a spacer, you're going to find putting in your insulation in a little bit harder and a little bit longer of a job. Whereas if you watch one of my other videos, John came up with the idea that if we put the bottom two pieces of insulation in first, put the noggins on top, then it's a lot quicker, isn't it, John? Do you remember coming up with that idea, no? It was flu, but it was my idea. It was just one of those fluky ideas. How many have we got? It worked. Right, so because the floor is level, because the floor is level and the walls are square, that means when we put these up, that means our walls are plumb as well. But what we'll have to do, this is a big wall, so we'll have to put a brace in that to hold it from being, uh, to hold it from bellying over when we put our roof in the middle. But we know that is square, that is square, and because that is fixed to that, then that corner is plumb, and that's just the way it is.
<laughs> well, don't let it slip off, John. It's slipping that board, isn't it? Yeah, it's not coming off my side. I'm up. Right, dripping to up, right, mate, right. There's no what I can do for you, John. Steady away. Yeah, go on, it's coming off. Like right. Get a screw in bottom down here. Yeah. Is it pushed all the way down, John, at bottom? What, mate? Can it come more down to you? I don't want the bottom, it's touching. Right, get a screw in it. Fucking hell, who's that driver? Yeah. Screw it! That's it. John, do the middle now. Do the middle. No, no, John. John, the middle of the wall here. Okay. Middle. Of, do you want to lie down that frame, see if it's straight? What we're saying, Josh? So there's your side walls up, that's your back walls, I think we are recording, yeah? So there's your side walls up, there's your back walls up. What we'll do now, we'll wrap that membrane round there, we'll put another baton on there, and then we'll cross baton it horizontally as well. There will be a door and two windows going in there, but as of yet, the customer has not decided where they're going, and that's why we haven't put them in. What we're going to do now is clear sight. Jesus Christ, there's wasps everywhere. We've caught wasps on that bush at this time of year. Middle of October and it's full of wasps. Um, so that's it, that's your walls up, that's your frame and your basin. Um, we're putting furrings on this roof um, simply because I made a slight error. <laughs> so this customer will have a flat roof internally and he'll have furrings on. But I hate doing flur flurings. I hate doing flurings and I'll explain when we put them on as to why I hate doing them and why I think they're a lot of balls. Okay, uh, thanks very much. If you'd like to like, subscribe and follow, um, what we're aiming to do, we're aiming to do a live one. So we're going to get as many people as we can on the job and see if we can crash it up in a weekend and get it fully built in a weekend and air it live on YouTube. So if you're interested in that, just let me know as well and we'll try and do that. So please like and don't forget to subscribe. And if you look for one of my videos when I hit 70,000, if I hit 70,000, now I'm giving away a free DeWalt drill as well. And one more thing before I go, build packs. I know timber's expensive at the moment, but a build pack will save you fortunes. Build packs, 13 different sizes, available at my website, www.oakwoodgardenrooms.com. You all right, Jen?